healing is possible. We share stories of people everywhere who have healed from their diagnoses. Powered by healthrevolution.org. I'm your host, Dr. Anup Kumar. Hello and welcome to the Healing is Possible podcast. I am Sunet Johannes, and today I'll be speaking to Dr. Lakshmi Prada, a classical Southern Indian vocalist, an artist, a dental surgeon, a healthcare IT specialist, and author. Dr. Lakshmi was born with a condition called achondroplasia, a kind of dwarfism. And Dr. Lakshmi's strong, compassionate parents helped her reach her full capacity and meet and surpass all expectations. Dr. Lakshmi Prada has recently written her second book called Delicate Darlings, which we will discuss today. Welcome, Dr. Lakshmi Prada. Thanks, Sanit. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity. We're so happy to, to hear what you have to say today. I think this is such an important topic. Um, so this book is based on your childhood experiences. Right. And and how your parents raised you, I think, a lot of it. So um, my first yeah. question is, why did you want to write this book? Yeah, so it was it it didn't it didn't happen with the proper planning, but uh, there was a phase where I I was in a crossroads where I just wanted to, you know, try out something new. So that's when um, I was thinking uh, what I should do, what is what is it I'm supposed to do with my life. So there was a phase where I was just thinking, what is the purpose of my life? Where, uh, you know, I've been doing job, I've been doing some amount of my own passion things like singing and other things. But beyond that, there was a phase of stagnancy. So that's when I was just, I started thinking like, so my parents were looking into my thoughts and uh, they were just uh, giving me support. And at some point, my mother, uh, she gave me a small instinct stating that uh, there is a thing you can do. And see, you have gone through a lot of things in your life. And those are the real life lessons you've learned. And it's time that you just start looking into some uh, ways by which you can, you know, spread that uh, experiences to people so that it will create a realization on, you know, how life can be and uh, how things can turn around when the right kind of, uh, you know, support system uh, are in place which which will push everything you know in the right direction so so that opened up my eyes and I just started just uh, writing so it was almost six 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 and a half years now uh, so this book is I just started and meanwhile I my mother also passed away so this is something that this was her last this thing which she had, you know, initiated in me and after doing so much for me in my life. So I just wanted to give a proper effort to, you know, write down the facts in a much more simpler story-like format. The, the characters are built in with different, different, uh, in, you know, um, uh, personalities and uh, situations. So that's where, you know, I thought it will be something different from the usual book. So that's how it started. Okay. And, and this is a book about your childhood. Um, and it's also about, it's trying to help other people um, have the supports and systems to, to raise children in a, in a good way. So how come, right. you, how come you called it Delicate Darlings? Where did that title come from? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I generally children are, uh, you know, the the tender, tender hearts uh, people, right? They are they are just tender in every aspect. They are very uh, ignorant. Uh, they are innocent, and they don't know anything, you know, uh, about what a world is all about. Like they just, you know, they they are simply bold and try to do things and try to explore things with a lot of innocence and uh, so that's where the you know so delic 
the delicate word i just picked it up the darlings generally you know children are very close to our hearts so we call them darlings so that's how i just came with the name delicate darlings okay no i love that name it's lovely um so your one of the chapters in your book is about uh, bullying in childhood which is such a widespread problem like and it's now with social media there's new forms of bullying and um so i'm curious yeah. about um your experiences with that if if you'd be willing to share and then also like sure. how to like what what supports or what suggestions you have for parents and people who have children in their their life yeah so this is a very important topic in fact um, i have uh, done even a prior podcast and conferences where um, the, this points have been this this topic has been highlighted it's not only in india it was it this is a common issue across the world and it's a universal problem so there are a lot of reasons for bullying like it is it's not only so with respect to the disability part of it it is also because of racial discrimination and the gender equality and equality and there are a lot of religious religion involved and the sexual orientation involved so and the color aspect of the skin color aspect so and it doesn't stop at the child level it goes to the teenage level and even adults in fact for me i would say that if i if i consciously look around if i go and start walking on road even now people stare at me and you know start uh, may passing comments so these it is a never ending phenomenon that happens across uh, you know at several dimensions of it like sort of so this is and there are so many initiatives every country is taking up but it is not full fledged but ultimately the victims doesn't get a you know uh, understanding on how to deal with it because ultimately you know they suffer a lot not only the people who are bullied the the, the support system that for example children children's caregivers and the schools you know in which way they are not able to figure out how to deal with it because it's more of a psychological oriented rather than you know um, so which is much more difficult to tackle than any other issues any other uh, medical issues psychological issues are it is very difficult so from my um, from my experiences it's it i i would say that uh, 30 35 years back i i i am still surprised that my parents were so progressive like so they didn't have much idea about my condition they just went with one positive approach where my doctor said she is going to be a brainy kid only factor she will have only issue she will have is she will be stunted in growth she will beyond a point she will not grow so uh, so i have a elder brother sibling also so the doctor really put in one 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 sentence to my parents that stating that please don't treat her differently treat her just like any other kid and make sure that you support her in every aspect of it irrespective of how society treats her mm-hmm. so this is this you know and from that point i think my parents could really make out what all things my, as a child and as a girl as a teenager as a woman i will be going through in life so every stage of life uh, instead of giving me any you know uh, sympathy they used to push me into the situations so ask me to face it like they keep saying that you cannot run away from your situations you have to face it you have to go and if people don't accept you you have to make them accept you have a very nice face you have a very smiling uh, you know uh, character you you are bubbly and you have to go and just start talking to people and make them feel good about you so that is so that that's a positive energy you you can you know spread across people such that they will forget about what they are thinking about you in, in the wrong way so so that is what you know they that, that strong support that my parents gave they, they were always positive even if i fail even if i fall somewhere in any situations they just 
come behind me and then lift me up and they say go ahead you cannot stop here sort of so that kind of you know force so they were very strong very determined and on the, at the same time very very supportive uh, and that strong foundation helped me out you know to deal with the people so there are situations where really bad uh, bullying has happened where uh, people have discriminated not only from the school aspects not only in the you know when i walk on the roads uh, even situations where in uh, professional side of it where they don't accept me as a professional so even uh, as a you know uh, doctor initially i had faced some challenges so similarly as uh, it professional initially the, there were a lot of challenges so at any point of time i give my best and when it loses beyond a point i stand against and i start you know taking those uh, repercussions and i start start talking like it is not like that i am also one among you people right you if you can if you you look at me differently tomorrow your own people if they become disabled due to some reasons do you treat them like that will you treat will you treat them like that so such kind of striking you know sentences when we push back stay you know on to the faces of people who say such things then they stop so you have to be uh, you know humble but when it goes beyond you should be firm and you should react so that's how you know uh, i have taken my things or uh, you know especially when while dealing with such comments and bullying sort of it used to be very tough there are situations where i used to come back home and i used to shout yell at my parents frustrated because i am not able to bear with it but that's when you know instead of showing you know the, the sympathy they used to just listen to it like a pillars strong pillars and uh, allow me to calm down and later on they just come and explain to me that this is how it is world is like this you cannot you cannot correct everybody you have to just be there ignore what it is not relevant which is not going to make any difference in my life so because such comments until unless it hits my heart it is not going to affect me in any way so i just just you know ignore it and move ahead so that's how you know i've been taking it up since the childhood yeah and so i'm i'm hearing kind of three things there right it's the <laughs> um, the fact that i think the foundation it sounds like to me was your parents were really supportive like you had a safe place at home so it's it starts there like and you know you were able to get mad or tell them when you're frustrated and but then they they helped you to face it like and just say like this is the world you're living and you have to deal with it like eventually um right. and then so you taught you were taught to just like keep going um but then you were also taught to like you can only do that like be humble and you know kind of accept those things to a point because sometimes you have to actually address it and be firm so right that's a that's a nice like uh um yeah <laughs> kind of a nice uh i guess equation that other people can follow right um so i want i want to hear a little bit more about um raising you with as a as a child with a disability as well i know that's your second chapter or, or one of the chapters that you talk about i know you you've kind of spoken to it here but um um were there any other supports your family gave you or any maybe you didn't need supports but um anything outside of the family um the family support that that you that helped you next important part when i mean in my life was the schools so school changing school was a routine thing in my life because my father had a transferable job so every two years every three years we used to change places and you know i used to get uh, into new schools so getting adjusted to schools were always a challenge and getting an admission to schools were also a challenge for my parents because there are a lot of you know uh, pushback stating that you know the child looks so different and it, the other kids may not be able to you know get acquainted with her and the parents the other kids parents may not like it so they just have to you know push and again the, the strong uh, push that my parents used to give and uh, try out multiple schools and finally you know you know get at, get me admitted to the best schools right so that's 
that's been always a challenge but um, uh, one good thing is it it only lasted for 6 months where this kind of you know pushbacks happened once i get into it i i get along very well with all the kids and teachers and everybody so they become very happy and i was very good at uh, multiple things like singing and uh, studies and everything so there was no reason to for them to say that i am uh, i'm not doing well or find reasons to push me out of the school so so somewhere or the other you know i was compensating what they wanted and they were very happy about it and uh, so there were situations i will i'll tell you there was a situation where in uh, this was a transition phase uh, between uh, my 10th grade and uh, uh, i was going into 11th grade and but as usual my father got transferred to a different place and uh, the place was uh, you know and the time in which this happened was in a very critical phase where there was not not much time to you know uh, to search for the school so there was one phase where uh, uh, the schools uh, uh, admissions were just uh, 15 20 days apart i had to get in and my parents had to force so what i was so acquainted to the previous school i didn't want to get out of that school so uh, teachers were very supportive and a uh, lot of things uh, you know i was so adjusted and uh, i was doing very well in that school so the change of place uh, and there were sit- situations where it was very competitive in the new place like sort of so uh, i i started missing many things and i was slowly getting into a very uh, a depressive mood so so my parents weren't uh, realizing it and there was a phase where uh, the board exams we have the plus 2 boards you know 12th exam is a very critical uh, based on which we get admission to the college like sort of so the it was very critical and around 6 8 months back um, they figured out that i have been giving blank pa- exam papers without giving any answers so principal of the school just called my parents and said that uh, we cannot admit we cannot uh, ask her to continue in the school because uh, she is giving blank papers she is not doing well and we can't afford her to be you know uh, to write the board exams so that's when you know my parents knew that i am going through a tough phase because it was a little tough for me um, the, but never thought that i have been i am doing such kind of a thing like giving blank and some papers and uh, so so but then the parents gave a briefing about how bright i was in the past uh, you know uh, classes and uh, that is when principal realized there is something wrong going on with me like so she advised to meet uh, at psychiatrist mm-hmm. so that time being you know you even now the stigma lies you know meeting a psychiatrist or a psychologist it's not easily accepted by anybody anybody anyone in the society so you feel that there is something drastically wrong with the you know they call it you're mentally ill that's what the society will say so but for a change my parents were uh, taking it very positively and they said to make her all right to bring her back to you know the her full potential we will do anything so she she the principal gave the numbers and we just uh, went there and the principal also said next three months she can be at home she need not come to school let her recover completely and you know and the school uh, curriculum detail everything notes and everything was sent to my house mm. to pick up things and teachers were visiting me very often to check how am i doing all that happened and uh, the doctor said she is undergoing a bit a bit of a little depression and um, and a little bit of so the, what has happened was i was i i couldn't get accustomed to the new setup and uh, there was a fear of failure that had cropped in where i couldn't you know focus on my education and i i never used to sleep because of the stress so a lot of factors had you know pushed me into a situation that i was not getting a clarity on where what i am doing like sort of so it was it's in a very difficult phase and 
three months they said you parents uh, the parents were advised to uh, you know just be with me and make me comfortable make me happy and take me around and not put pressure on me and everything and uh, and uh, even uh, counselings happened multiple sessions between me and parents and everything so gradually and the, as usual the schools the school teachers were also very understanding until then they didn't know that what i was going through when the principal told them that you should help her because she's a bright kid she is undergoing some kind of a stress here and we'll have to help her out and they took that initiative and they were also coming to you know uh, help me out with the lessons and everything mm-hmm. and you won't believe it it just took 3 months 3 to 4 months for me to come back to terms then i realized what am i doing with my life this is not what i am mm-hmm. i realized it and suddenly you know i just kick started myself okay this is i just you know grabbed back my energy and i i just started reading my books and with full focus i started jumping up and down with full you know energy and started going around and uh, uh, it was a rapid fire there after like so i was just taken to multiple um, uh, you know uh, what do you say the places where i can rejoice myself my parents took those initiative and and then everything fell in place and i gave a very good uh, exams and i got really good marks and then i wrote my entrance and got into the medical school like the dental school oh so wow. see yeah. the transition that happened if if that principal wouldn't have given that advice after genuinely listening to my parents i wouldn't have been what i am today that's that's such a great story i it reminds me of the first uh, doctor that your parents talked to and they said like don't treat her differently like she's going to be like that that first like right. the childhood one and then you had this um school like pr- principal like to really believe in you and then yeah and i love how your parents uh like they they went beyond what they were comfortable with you know seeing a psycho- like they were just willing to help you no matter what so if they if she needs to see a psychologist if she needs to take 3 months off school which i'm sure are two big deal that's both of those are a big deal um but they rallied behind you so you've also had a lot of support that's just like wonderful to hear um i have so many more questions i'm that i have want to ask you but um i'm going to go to one of the other chapters cuz you're kind of talking about it right now um <clears throat> is about uh parental pressures in childhood and how to raise children differently like and maybe not put so much pressure um maybe that's the that's kind of the story you just gave now actually exactly so that also has that piece of it where you know the pressure to perform matters that's where you know you you get into a mode of stress and this is a very common phenomena that happens in the teenage age these days because at some point or the other you know there is some kind of an expectation set whether it is within themselves or it is through somebody or peer pressure or mm-hmm. or you know seeing multiple other factors around them they themselves come into that uh, you know position where they get into really stress mode so uh, so major factor which i felt is understanding what they are going through you know by closely associating with them so that that is very critical in a children's uh, a child's life that's where if, uh, you know whoever it is it can be a caregiver it can be a parent it can be a school teacher or a friend also you know whoever is closely associated with a child uh, you know they should be very very critical or serious about uh, what the child is talking about what the uh, the child is reacting about and is is there a change in the behavior is there any even the temper tantrums they you know suddenly bring in with no correlation with the situation right maybe it is an uh, you know accumulation of some kind of stress within them may not be uh, related to that situation maybe something inside that is going on inside their mind until unless some so as a teenager uh, it's a best thing is that a parent should come down to their level rather than 
putting pressure or imposing themselves no this is how i studied this is how things happened for me so i will deal with you like how i was treated or i will deal with you like how i think is right that's where the parent go wrong in a big way that never works you have to come down to the child level and understand what's going on inside that child's mind for that you should become a child so you will have to be a friend for the child and that's where you know it becomes a very critical thing you can read their mind they become very comfortable to talk anything and everything that is going around inside and share things it, it may be right or wrong so ultimately what needs is accept what they are saying channelize them give them the right kind of advices suggestions teenagers just don't like you know you giving them you know advices or instructions you just have to be there with them and you should take them along and make them realize sometimes you just have to leave them to try what they want they may fail they may go in the right direction they may become successful we don't know but we will have to give them the try you try it i i'll give you all the opportunities i'll give you all the precautions like all the heads up on these 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 things can happen but you try it so there are different ways to you know deal with the child psychology so it depends on each child is different so we need to understand their temperament we need to understand how how well they can be molded so that is very critical that assessment comes only when you really understand your child i love that i think that's just so powerful i like i think um yeah, so many times people see their children through their own eyes, but instead, like, I like, I love what you said, like, you have to be like the child, like, instead of making the child like you, <laughs> which right. I think is just like, a, kind of maybe the first reaction people will take, like, it's actually better for you to, like, think like them, like, you bring yourself to their level and, and try to understand and, you know, where they're coming from. And then, and then also what you were saying about giving them the opportunity to fail or, or just to try things instead of maybe being very rigid and um because that was going to be the next question it's about overprotective parenting um, exactly. which is the other extreme you know but like you but like giving them the opportunity to to try things and let them know that they can fail and maybe failure you know failure is a part of life like teaching them that like and then maybe exactly they can exactly. succeed because they right. know that like okay well I got that failure out of the way and now I can try something else, you know, instead of exactly. it, this big thing that's, you know, a big failure that that really holds them back. It's just, no, this is just something that happens to everybody. And I think that's, that's really powerful. Yes, that's exactly was my take also, like, because failure is nothing big. We just have to accept it. It's again, uh, you know, uh, something that uh, gives you better lessons, a lot more lessons than, what uh, you when what you can learn from success and but only thing is parents has to be ready to support them even during that failures not only parents this whoever is associated with the child should never ignore or leave them when they fail that's where we have to be more you know uh, proactive in giving them a feeler that you fail i'm there to support you sort of so they will have that, you know, they should not be uh, timid. They should be fearless to face anything in life. That's that's the lesson we are trying to teach the child. Yeah. So, so I, life is all of a journey, right? You should cherish every aspect of it. And it, it should not be like, okay, you, something has happened. That's the end of it. It's, there is no end for something it is only giving you opportunity to go forward it is there is nothing looking back like exactly so that's that that's what it is like and and when you say that too i'm thinking about like it's really just removing a excess level of fear from life because that's just a very fear based thought that like any failure is going to ruin you um you know but instead if you could just take it in stride it's like no this is just something like it you can maybe live a little bit lighter because you're not in so much fear, like constant fear of failure, because some people, you know, it paralyzes them and they don't even live their life because they're just 
in right. <laughs> like the, you know, they, can't, they just can't go make the mistake and then fail and then that's not even that big of a deal but the the fear becomes bigger than um than the actual failure itself actually that's what it is yeah <laughs> Well, I, I love all of that. I, I just love how you keep saying about like how that, well, I, I keep hearing maybe like how that, um, that support, that home support and like, you know, yes, even when they fail, then you have to be even more present. You have to like, you have to be more, you know, supportive and, um, you know, reassuring and get them to try again and, or, you know, or try something different. Like, I think like that, that piece, even from what you've told me about your parents, like that just seems to be the most, um, uh, like the the like the gift. I feel like this book is kind of a love letter to your parents, and like I think so much <laughs> is, is how much they supported you. Like you had a very supportive home life, which a lot of people don't. So like that that okay. in itself was just so critical, and um, I think that was almost like the foundation of all the other supports and all the other things you learned along the journey. Um, I am excited to read your book when it is. Um, <laughs> When it's I don't know how far it is going to be um, really uh, the reason is it, it's it's my version so I've just made certain things more subtle because the impact I have had is much more but didn't want to make it more very very strong enough because it it's something that everybody should start reading and try to relate where they fit in because somewhere or the other you know they will fit in that's what I believe so it's it's all you know there are there are phases where so i i talked about the school system so school systems nowadays the grades and the marks doesn't matter ultimately the you're building a character you're building a personality because that's what the critical aspect of it that's that's the gist of it you have to build and uh, when the child goes into school they spend too much of time there and very you know that it's a very vital time period where the growing phase and they get exposed to many things where a lot of energy channelized you have to channelize and uh, the thought process has to be channelized the school system should be in such a way that they should support that more uh, critically than the other academics book academics like sort of so Absolutely. that's a very important thing i feel you know people should start thinking right it's Yes, I think it's a really important systemic change that has to happen alongside right. focus on academics, but then there's all this emotional and other, other supports that children need, like they're, they're right. full humans. So I, I appreciate that. Right. And I also want to say that I think this book is really important for healing. If, even if you don't have children in your life, like your own inner child, like you can heal yourself and make, give yourself that ability to, to fail, to, to, you know, give yourself that <laughs> compassion and, you know, that maybe other people, maybe your parents didn't give you. So I think this book is great for a lot of people. Uh, I do only have one question left for you, Dr. Alakshmi Prada is um, what does healing is possible mean to you? healing is it's 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 all self oriented because at the most you know i keep telling about the support system here the support system will be able to give you an energy the boost and a feeling of balance that you know that is what it provides but how you respond to it yeah. is more important if you are not in a position to accept those and still you wanted to be on in, inside your shell, then you are putting yourself into a miserable situation. So the healing will happen when it, it becomes more mutual. So when you start reacting to the positive energy, you are getting the positive vibrations you are getting from the, the external, only the positive things. Mm. Ignoring the things which you, you don't want, you don't like it, all that can be set apart and you should tune your mind to absorb only the happy part of it or the part which gives you inner peace. So that is what matters. So ultimately, what what do you want? What I what what do you think will help me? You know, uh, remain in what in a space where I can I can channelize my energy to the best, right? So that is that thought process has to come in and uh, conflicts which you get to see, you get to experience. That is the worst part. I have also experienced in and I have heard from people who have gone through it and that is that's one phase you know once you get into that mode where you you 
experience conflicts for example parental conflicts a child observes or uh, you know we get into fight mode with people right ultimately these are negative energies which will which will put you down and your system down and you will never be able to come out of it because that impacts you in a big way so there's always a balance that has to be established so that's where the healing will be the maximum that's really a beautiful place to end. I thank you so much, Dr. Lakshmi Prada. I We will put the link to your book when it's available. It's not available yet in the notes below. Um, but I just thank you again for your time today. And um, I thank all our listeners. And I hope that this really touches a lot of people. And I'm sure it did. Thank you so much. I hope so. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Senate. And uh, looking forward to connect with you more often. The stories shared here are the experiences of the speakers. They're not intended as medical advice. Join our network or simply share your story at healthrevolution.org. Healing is possible.